Hello everybody. Uh, this is a, a follow-up video to the uh, um, Mini Instruments uh, 6-70 Geiger counter environmental monitor thing that I took apart the other day. Um, this is the probe off it. Um, obviously I, um, I determined this is, I, I'm pretty certain this isn't working so what I'm going to do now is um, just cut it open and uh, see what there is inside. Um, I don't know, maybe that will explain why it doesn't appear to be uh, working properly. So. Um, the material this is made out of is um, it's it, it's not a very strong material. It scratches quite easily, so I don't think it's going to be uh, very difficult just to uh, just to hacksaw off the end here, and then everything inside should just slide out. Well, that's the idea. There appears to be a another inserted piece of material. I wonder whether that was this cap that maybe it slid in, and as I've um, cut through it with a hacksaw, it's left the inside of the uh, inside of the cap in place. So I'm just going to try and pull it out because I think it's preventing me from getting the the tube out, there we go. Okay, this is the uh, the, the tube. I've just realised what this is. Um, after I was hacksawing through it, I started to smell it, and um, I kind of recognised it after a while. Um, it's um, um, the phenolic. It's the same stuff they make phenolic PCBs out of. It's got that sort of brown colour, and it's got that that's that smell. So that's what uh, that's made of. Anyway. So here's the tube. It's a fair bit of weight in it. It looks like it's wrapped. So we've got a piece of the phenolic here as a spacer, some uh, bit of tape, some foam padding around this silver part here, another spacer. Another bit of this wrapped round it, and then the end, and then we've got the that small PCB with the resistor and capacitor on it. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that this is lead. very soft. Okay, so I'm just going to peel away We have a Mollard MX145. 
Right, what I've actually uh, done with this is uh, I've taken off all the, the lead shielding that I found on this tube. I've, uh, I've got it reconnected up to my uh, Mighty Ohm Geiger counter and I've got it plugged into my, uh, my computer so I can actually get some, some uh, meaningful numbers out of it. So I'm just going to try retesting it um, just, to see, uh, just to see what I get and have a play around with, with this again. Um, one thing that I have done is, uh, is just looked up the part number. Um, the Mullard MX145 apparently is a gamma only tube. So um, the um, alpha and beta that's coming out of this uranium uh, probably won't really do much to this, but I'm hoping it might make some difference um, just to prove that the tube is working. Um, I guess uh, if I want to test this properly, I'm going to have to try and find a, uh, a source of gamma uh, to actually test this with. Right, so I'll uh, just turn it on. And we're getting a sort of similar output to, uh, to we, that we saw before. Right, well I think that sort of settled down now at about uh, 200 counts per minute. So I'm just going to take my um, uranium sample, uh, which is uh, only a beta and alpha emitter, and I'm just going to put it on the tube. Right, well, I think that's a, a pretty clear difference. Let's just take it off again. So I think that's settling that back down now to uh, to round about the 200 that we saw before when we first started this. So I think that's uh, that's really interesting. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, is reassemble this uh, this tube into the uh, into its holder to keep it safe um, without the lead shielding, uh, and I'm going to um, um, see what I can source in terms of. Uh, um, gamma emitters and uh, maybe test this a f further in the future but it does mean that um, this tube does appear to be working which is uh, which is great news um, and completely different to what uh, what I originally thought it just goes to show um, it always helps to open something up and find out what's inside it doesn't it okay I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you on the next video